even if we're not really going under the sun to the beach every time, there's still a cumulative damage to the skin that make us form more pigment. Hyperpigmentation is a very common complaint of Filipinos, especially Pinays, because we have more melanin compared to our Caucasian counterpart. Number one cause of the pigmentation is the photo aging. This is the cumulative exposure to the sun. Even if we're not really going under the sun to the beach every time, there's still a cumulative damage to the skin that make us form more pigment. So when we're exposed to UV radiation, to chronic UV radiation, what happens is it stimulates the melanocyte to form pigment. Melanocyte is the pigment cells of the body. So actually, it's a defense mechanism of the body to the irritant like the sun. So what happens is when you're exposed to UV radiation, you form more free radicals so your body has to make the defense army or these inflammatory mediators. We call it inflammatory mediators that stimulate the pigment cells or the melanocyte to form more pigment. So that's what happens. And of course, there are other factors that may trigger. For example, our hormones. When you're pregnant, you form more pigment. Like for me, I just delivered my baby last January. So uh, I'm doing everything just to lessen the formation of pigment. At the same time, the hormones, if you're taking oral contraceptive pills like estrogen and progesterone, it stimulates the formation of the pigmentation. And other causes would be drug-induced medication. For example, the common antibiotics would be tetracycline. And other products with chronic use might cause pigmentation. There's a very common lightening cream, the hydroquinone, which is very good for whitening, especially for melasma. But if you use it for more than six months and more, it can cause pigmentation. The most common pigmentation would be the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, it happens when there's an inflammation in the skin and then the defense mechanism of the body is to form pigments. Example of PIH or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation would be acne. So since it's inflammation, what happens is you produce pigment then when it's inflamed. That's why you get the, the acne marks especially when you scratch on it. Those are the most common for age, uh, teenage years up to 30 to 40, mid-30s. Most common concern, PIH. And then, other cause would be the mga solar lentigens, lentigo. Those are because of uh, chronic exposure to the sun. So what happens is you form this mga, yung mga circumscribed na mga coin size here, na pigmentation. Uh, because uh, with chronic exposure to the sun, uh, your body produces more pigment. So most of the time, you get it in the area kung saan, kung saan na hit ng araw. So these are the common area for solar lentigo and lentigens. It can also happen to the extensor aspect ng forearms. So those are the areas. And other, other pigmentation would be... Um, like yung mga seborrhea keratosis and DPN. So those are mga pigmentation like solar lentigo. They form more pigments usually because of chronic chronic stimulation You because of the sun. So you form these pigments. You get it from like in the face and in the body. Para siyang skin tag but may item siya. So it's because of chronic exposure to the sun. Some people are more prone to get it. And other very common form of pigmentation would be melasma. 40 to 50% of women of the population, they suffer from melasma. Usually, women experience it. There are three main causes of melasma. Number one is genetics. Second would be chronic sun exposure. And then third would be estrogen and progesterone. Like, uh, for example, if you're taking oral contraceptive pills, it can form, it can cause formation of pigment. So, diba, when you're pregnant, you get pigmentation sa neck, 
and then mas lumalala yung melasma also when you're taking oral contraceptive pills so for some patients who are more prone or we have this genetic susceptibility to form melasma even if they take it for one to two years they can stimulate formation of pigment for melasma other causes of pigmentation there are other pigmentation that causes uh, you lose some melanin in the body for example when you form the tiny dots yung mga white dots do, do you see that yung mga white dots sa kamay sa usually when you're 30 and above sometimes you develop these tiny dots of white dots so what happens because of chronic sun exposure uh, your skin instead of producing more pigment nagugulat yung skin so it stops producing pigment or melanin mm. so it, it's called idiopathic gutate hypomelanosis. So what happens is lessening of melanin production. So walang pigment. For me, if you want to lighten the pigmentation, first is to remove the trigger factor. So what is the trigger factor? Usually, Pinoy's, they just apply once a day na sunscreen. So they don't reapply sunscreen. And it Depende pa sa amount ng sunscreen. So, ko, so that's very important, the trigger factor. And then second, which is very common for melasma, will be oral contraceptive pill use or exposure to medications that highly, which is highly irritant, which may cause pigmentation of the skin. So best is to avoid the trigger factors. So kasi if, even if you treat it and you don't avoid the trigger factors, it will come back. Mm -hmm. So, and then second would be if you want to do topicals at home, better to start with antioxidant that can lighten the skin because the topical antioxidant actually it fights off the free radicals that being produced by pollution, by exposure to environmental environmental stress factors such as uh, mercury or lead so it fights off the free radicals so there's a lessening of the inflammation of the skin so it will naturally lighten the skin so the typical topical medication antioxidant that you can look for would be something that contains vitamin c um, at least 20 percent which is very effective but of course, it depends on the brand because not all vit vitamin C are created equal. Other topical antioxidant would be niacinamide, coenzyme Q, and um, those are and also vitamin A. So those are the typical antioxidant that you can apply to the face. Second is if you can look for some sub substances that can inhibit the inhibit the tyrosinase tyrosinase enzyme which is the one responsible for the formation of melanin so this one ito yung mga yung mga ano um, matatapang na lightening which is hydroquinone hydroquinone it's very effective for lightening but it should be prescribed by a doctor by a dermatologist or uh, by aesthetic physician because it has side effects it can really irritate the skin even if you apply it for a few days so it should be applied based on the doctor's based on the doctor's prescription and other strong chemical that you can apply to the face would be retinoids or retinol retinol is or retinoids retinoic acid they're really good uh, for lightening because it removes the dead skin cells however if you use it combined with other with other harsh chemical it might cause pigmentation especially if you don't protect yourself from the sun like for example the usual complaint in the clinic would be post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation due to the use of lightening products so uh, they have been using this product from the drugstore i will not i will not name the the brand the product name but it's really good for whitening but since they're uh, they were not advised on how to use it. What happens is they apply it to the face. So this is a combination of a strong retinol, retinoic acid, and some lightening cream. And then they expose themselves to the sun. Uh, and then what happens is since you remove the dead skin cells, and then uh, it's, it, it's like a wound. 
So what happens is you remove the dead skin cells. So it's an open wound. When you expose it to the sun, it's going to form more pigment as a response to the as a defense mechanism. So you get PIH. So there are so many side effects if you use the strong products like hydroquinone, retinoid. I would suggest for sensitive skin, uh, just try first at least uh, once a week and then apply thinly whole face at night and then second week you can try it twice a week and then on the third week every other night so so just try it pero minsan kasi with other products sometimes you you use it with other products which can exfoliate the dead skin cells and you up, don't apply moisturizer pa lalong lumalala so it it's really the combination of the products and the type of skin that you have. There are other products which is good for lightening, like kojic acid, acylic acid, mandelic acid, bearberry extract, niacinamide. For sunspots or solar lentigo, um, this treatment, like uh, for, for example, if you just use kojic acid and alpha hydroxy acid or bearberry extract, it can lighten, but um, we might not be able to totally remove the the pigmentation um, for for sunspots or solar lentigo. If you want it to be removed fast, um, I would recommend laser. So if you use laser, it will burst the pigment. So mawawala agad siya. It will turn dark first, and then it will lighten after several days. So for me. For solar lentigo, major resistance siya with topical medicines. Even if you use hydroquinone or retinoids, it can it, it can lighten, but not as good as laser. So in Luminis, we use Pico Plus laser, which is a Pico laser. It targets the pigment using a Pico Second technology. So, with one to three session, every two weeks or once a month, you can totally remove the solar lentigo or the sunspots. Other lasers available would be the Angel White Laser or Revlite, which is very common. These are nanotechnology laser. They're not as fast as Pico laser, but they can do the job. I mean, they're also good, but you, you might need to do it five to eight session compared to the Pico laser na around one to three session. Of course, number one would be not reapplying the not reapplying the sunscreen. So usually when we go out, we feel satisfied already by applying it to the face. Most of the time, you just apply it before going out. Then you apply your moisturizer and then your sunblock and your makeup. Then you're okay na. We have to be reminded that sunblock has a half-life. Half-life of sunblock or sunscreen is two hours. So after four hours, it's gone already. Mm -hmm.